I am going to show you how you can use OpenAI Assistant API and build Assistant within your own applications. I will show you how you can use threads, how to append messages, how to keep users separate and not mix up chat, how the memory works and all this. So make sure you watch the video till the end. So to get started, make sure you have this documentation page open, a chat GPT interface, the playground of OpenAI and a VS Code editor. If you have any other editor, that's fine also. So first of all, let's make sure our OpenAI client is up to date. I will go to terminal and if I type pip install minus minus upgrade OpenAI, it will update my OpenAI client version to the latest one. And if I type OpenAI hyphen hyphen version, as you can see, I have the version 1.1.1. .1 .1. Make sure you have the same version. This is the latest one. Okay, so we are going to refer to their documentation in order to build something around their Assistant API. We will use Python to get connected with Assistant API, create our own Assistant and so on. So the step number one is to create an Assistant. For this, we are going to use the Playground environment to create an Assistant or we can do it programmatically as well, but I prefer this environment as it is much easier to understand things. So here I have selected assistant and if I click create, all I have to do is put the name of the assistant. Let's call it med tutor instructions. Let's say you are a person med tutor, write and run code to answer math questions. Okay. So next I have to select the model. I'm going to select GPT-4 Turbo. Next, I'm going to select the tools to which this assistant should have an access. So I can add functions. It is the same concept as function calling. I can have code interpreter. I have data retrieval and all this. In this video, I'm going to enable only this code interpreter. And that's it. I will save this. As you can see, a new assistant has been created on my account. This is the assistant ID. So whenever we are using this assistant, we will refer to this using this id okay so now let's get back to the code so first of all we have to create few users i am going to create a file users.json and inside this i will define few users i will say username so hell thread initially the thread will be null let me create another user and call it john it also does not have any thread. You can assume it is your application and this is the database of your existing users. Of course, there will be password and all this, but we are just referring user using their username only. Nothing else, just for the proof of concept. Okay, so we have this file done. Now let's get back to the code. And first of all, I'm going to define which user is using the assistant right now. So I will make a variable and call it the user. I will say Sohel. It's Sohel who is using the assistant. It can be done in parallel also. But for the sake of learning, let's do it sequentially. So the current user is Sohel. Okay, since we have created our assistant, let's scroll down. And step number two is we have to create a thread for a user if it does not exist, right? So this is the condition. If a thread does not exist for a user, we have to create it for them. So this is the piece of code that will create a thread for us, but there has to be a condition. Let's first of all read these users from this JSON file. Let's use the chat GPT interface and say, I have a user.json file and it have data like this. I want to read it and store it in a variable in form of list. Okay, this is the instruction for chat GPT. Let's use this piece of code. If I go to assistant and I also have to import JSON. Okay, so what it will do is it will read the .json file and store the list of users inside this variable. Once we have this, I am going to iterate through the list of users. I will say for i in user data if 
i username is equals the user and length of thread is less than one then we will create the thread so this condition means if the user exists and it does not have any thread assigned to it then you have to create the thread and once the thread is created we have to store the id of the thread back in this file so i will write my thread equals thread.id and i will break this loop and in the else condition i can just say pass or in fact i don't even have to write it here okay so once it is updated we also have to update the user.json file back i will tell chat gpt i have updated the user data variable how do i write it back so it has given me this code so once the thread id is assigned to the variable called thread we will write the data back on this file and finally break out of this loop so if i run this piece of code before that let's check it out okay this in this file i have no thread after the user called sohel right so let's run this piece of code and see what will happen sorry i have made a mistake over here as you can see it is supposed to be i thread i have just given it a straight string so if i run this piece of code now if i go to users.json as you can see the username sohel have a thread assigned to it right because it was the very first time the user entered your application you can assume like that if i run this piece of code again i will have the same thread id and the system will not create a new thread for this user let's verify this okay and if i control f as you can see it is the same i actually copied it previously okay now let's move to step number three we have created a thread for user if it does not exist the condition if it does not exist we will create a thread it is just from my side not in this documentation anyway so step number three is we have to add a message to the thread which means whatever input the user gives we have to store it in the thread we can do this by using this piece of code i will copy this and i will also take the user input equals hey there how you doing so let's assume this is the user input by the user name called Sohel. Okay. So this is the piece of code. And in content, I'm going to pass the user input. Okay. So this is the piece of code. What it takes is it takes the thread ID. It takes the content, which means the user input. And also the role, it will be predefined, of course. So we have to fetch this thread ID from user.json file. So to get the thread ID of the current active user, by active user, I mean the user which is currently using the assistant, which in this case is Sohail. What I'm going to write is, I will read the JSON file once again. Of course, I know it's an optimized way. I have done it previously, but for the sake of learning, let's forget about optimization and get the work done, right? So once i have the user data open i will save for i in user data if i username equals the user active user thread id equals i thread so here i'm going to define this variable as empty and it will go through the list if it finds the username is correct then it will assign the thread to this variable and we can pass this variable down here active user thread id okay so in messages now we are going to get something let me print the messages just to verify what it contains and write this piece of code okay this is the message id which was added to the thread okay so right now the thread contains the message only nothing else is happening we have to tell the thread hey you have to run and answer to this query so let's get back to step number four the step number four says run the assistant to run the assistant we have to run this piece of code what i'll do is i will just paste this here as it is 
and now the assistant ID comes to play. Initially, we made the assistant and we had the ID over here. As you can see, I will just copy this and I will paste it here. It's hard coded for the time being. And I can also pass any custom instruction like, hey, please address the user as John Doe or whatever. Let's say, please address the user as dear Sohel, including the response. Okay, so in thread, we have to pass the same ID as we did it over here. As you can see, this variable contains the thread ID. So if I scroll down, I will pass the same variable over here. We have the assistant ID and we have the instruction. So what will happen now is we are going to tell the thread, hey, can you run and respond to all the messages that you have to which you have not responded yet. This is what it actually means. So this piece of code will run and now let's print this variable called run and see what it contains. Let me clear the terminal and run this piece of code. Now the thread is running and you can see the status over here. It is in the queue. So once this status is changed to completed, it means we have our response ready and we have to fetch it from the thread. So let's get back to the documentation and move to step number five that says display the assistant response. So here now we are going to retrieve the response of the current active thread that is running. So I will paste this piece of code over here and here I will do the same. I will pass the active user thread ID and also I will pass the run ID over here. As you can see here we have got this called run. I will say run id and i will put this piece of code in the while loop because i might get the status and it is not completed that what i will have to do it again right i have to add some interval after which it will check whether the status is completed or not and if it is completed then it will fetch the response for us so i will say while true also let me import time import time so we can add some delay. I will say time dot sleep to I will make it wait for two seconds at least. And once that's done, and now in this run variable, I should have the I should get a lot of information, including the status. So anyway, let me print this first just to verify what are we getting inside this variable called run. Let me clear the terminal. Also, let me break this loop and see what we'll get. I think I have to do it like this. Okay, let's run it again. Okay, now in this one, I have the status that says completed. So it means the response has been generated inside the thread and all we have to do is fetch the response and show it to the end user. Okay, the next is we have to remove this break command and I will say if run.status is equals completed, then you have to break pass. So it will keep checking the status unless it is changed to completed. Once it is completed, then we will fetch the final output. Let's get back to the documentation. And this is the piece of code that will give us the final output by the thread. So I will copy this and paste it over here. Here, instead of thread.id, I'll say active user thread ID. So if you have followed me since the beginning, you will know why I'm using this variable called active user thread ID. Anyway, let's now print this variable called messages. Okay, let's run this and see what can happen. Okay, so as you can see, these are the responses because I have run this many times. That's why I have many responses previously. Okay, guys, so it's done. Now I am going to create a new user and call it Maxi. The question is the same. I will get to user.json file and create a new user. I will call it Maxi. Of course, initially it will have no thread assigned to it. And I will save this JSON file. Okay, here I have replaced the name. Previously, it was hard coded over here. Anyway, let's move down. And here, as you can see, we are printing the list of messages. We don't want that. We just want the most recent run that was completed. 
I mean the most recent output. So I'm going to say messages dot there are zero content zero text dot value. It will fetch me the most recent one. So let me print the user user input and down here I'll say assistant that's it. So now let's run this piece of code and see what will happen. Or right, as you can see, Maxi is saying, what can you do for me? And the assistant saying, hello, Maxi. I can assist you with variety of tasks such as answering question, programming. And you see how detailed the answer is. Now let me ask a very mathematical question because this is a math tutor, right? I will scroll up and I will replace this. And let's see if it is able to answer as per my input. Nice, I need to solve the equation. Sure, makes it to solve the equation. It is giving me the steps. We can isolate X on the side, plus to this, this, and this. So it's saying the solution to equation is X is equals what? This is the solution. Let's see if it is actually. Okay, as you can see, this is the exact answer over here. So let me say, what is the factorial of 300? Let's see how big the number is going to be. Okay, it's saying the factorial of 300 is enormously large number, much too large to display in the readable format here. So I can say, no, please give it to me in form of exponent, please. Thank you. Okay, so let's see. I'm not managing any memory. Let's see if the thread itself has the memory and knows what am I talking about. Actually, I'm talking about the factorial of 300, but in this input, I have not mentioned it anywhere, right? So let's see how it responds. Okay, it is amazing. We don't even have to take care of the memory, the context length and all this. It already knows what was my previous text to this assistant. And it just mentioned, okay, here's the factorial of 300 expressed in terms of its prime factor raised to their respective exponent. So this is the factorial of 300. It is such a huge number. You cannot display it like this. So anyway, I hope you guys like this video. If you have any specific questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. I will make sure to put the code on github but before that make sure you are hitting the subscribe button so i will make more videos about the latest updates of openai as well just to clarify the new updates to you guys and thank you so much for watching guys